I do actually have some reasons for why I like to keep my books this way. If you just want the short answer, it's because I like it. But if you want to know how it's organized and sort of what inspired it and how it works and if it actually works or if it doesn't, then let's get into it. I want you to know that when I first had the idea to flip all the books around, I was very, very nervous. I didn't know if it was going to work or if it would be annoying, if I would like it or not like it. I've done a lot of different shelf organizations as I'm sure most book nerds have. I've done a rainbow shelf, which was really fun for a while because it was very pretty, but it did make some things harder to find and that the series weren't always together, which drove my husband nuts. I didn't really care. And I've done it by like mood and genre. The reason I wanted to try it like this was basically purely aesthetic, at least in the beginning, but let me explain why. In the fall of 2017, my husband and I, who was my then fiance, packed up what we needed and moved to New Mexico for just six months. We knew it was going to be just that length of time, so we left all of our stuff here as it was. Living in New Mexico and traveling cross country and only being able to take literally what we could fit in our cars, that was an interesting experience mentally because it made us realize that we like things clearer. We like things a little bit minimalist. And I'm not talking about the minimalism where you get rid of everything and all that. But I just sort of got used to not having clutter because when we lived in New Mexico, we had like a nice airy townhome and it was airy and empty because our furniture was rented and it was pretty sparse and there wasn't a lot of the added stuff that people just accumulate throughout their lives. Some things I missed, but some things I realized weren't really contributing to anything and I got used to having this sort of cleaner, streamlined, neutral look and I started to really, really like that. I found it really calming. I felt like, I don't know, it just gave me a different perspective on things. That was part one of what inspired the change to do the flip around idea. Part two is actually part of our travels on the way back from New Mexico to Virginia, where we are now. It was a very long road trip back, but one of the best places we went to was the Biltmore Estate outside of, or in, Asheville, North Carolina. It's a beautiful, beautiful, incredible estate. It's built by the Vanderbilts. It's absolutely glorious. It's the sort of home you don't find in America. I think it might be the biggest home in America, though I'm not sure, like, don't quote me on that. But it's definitely up there. I found it an incredibly inspiring place, and if you ever have the chance to go, definitely do, because it's gorgeous. I'll pop up some of my my, like little phone pictures I took. This house has an incredibly huge library. The owner of the house who un unfortunately passed away, he had an incredible book collection. He loved to read and a lot of important literary figures moved through the halls of that home and stayed there as guests. It's just a very cool history. The library itself is stunning and again I'll pop up some pictures. It's wood paneled, there's a, there's a painting on the ceiling, incredible couches, furniture shelves, everything is top-notch and gorgeous. There's even a secret top door behind the upstairs fireplace so that guests, when they were staying in the guest wing, could come get a book before bed. I mean, it's genius. Am I right? You'll notice in the picture though that everything looks very color coordinated. <laughs> it's very aesthetically pleasing because all of the furniture and the decor and the dark wood is all based around the color of the book spines, which are all just a few colors. Of course, that was standard at the time. We didn't have the incredible printing abilities that we do now. There weren't like cover designers like there are now. And the opportunity that comes with that to create all sorts of different types of book covers. I'm a person who does value aesthetics. I'm a person who likes to feel comfortable in my own space, and for me, that means I like things to look coordinated. Now, back in the day when the Biltmore Estate first designed this library, it made sense for everything to go together already in that space because books are in a limited range of colors and designs, right? But today, and on my old version of these shelves, I read everything, as you know. <laughs> the only thing I don't read is like romance and poetry. That means that all of my books are different colors, they're different designs, different patterns. They all look very conflicting when I have like contemporary that are like pastel and bright blues, and then I have horror, which is like moody oranges, dark burgundy reds, and blacks. I mean, they just you know what I'm saying? They just don't go together. For a while it was fine and didn't bother me that much. The rainbow helped. Again, you can tell I was always aesthetically minded with this, but when I did it by mood slash genre, you could definitely, I don't know, it just looked disjointed. 
So when we moved back from New Mexico to Virginia, I had all these different mindsets now about how I preferred my space to be more clear, more open, more bright. And the bookshelves in this space, we have six of them, three are out here, two are in the bedroom, one's in the entryway. That's a lot of bookshelves, okay? In a very small space and I'm home all the time. I work from home, I work for myself, so I never leave this space. So I just want you to imagine being in a small space with six bookshelves, which are of course beautiful and I love to look at my books, obviously. <laughs> if I didn't, I probably wouldn't be the kind of person that kept them, but I do, I love that aspect of it. I started to feel as we moved back into this smaller place with, it's darker in here, it's just, it's just a different, mood and atmosphere to work within. It just looked all over the place and after a while it starts to feel like it's falling into the room in a weird way. It does the opposite of what you'd want it to do, which is make you feel calm and remember all of your wonderful book memories and where you got them and all that. It starts to just like be imposing and not welcoming. So I had this idea to flip the spines around and just leave out certain colors. So that's exactly what I did. Every book is turned around except colors that are either blue or orange because they go with our couch cushions. And again, I just like everything to sort of flow together, you know? If you're wondering how I organize this and how I don't like lose my mind, it's actually organized the same way it was before. So it's organized by mood slash genre. I've got like YA series on one shelf, contemporary and general fiction on another, horror on one shelf, thrillers on another shelf, all the classics are in the shelves in the bedroom, and all of those, by the way, are also flipped around except for a green color because that matches the colors going on in our bedroom. And I might do like a chat video or something where I show you, I don't know, we could just hang on there and chat. I don't know if you're interested in that, but I thought maybe it'd be fun to have like a more chill, like kind of a monthly favorites mashup video. So let me know if you want me to do that. I thought it might be fun, but I don't know, let me know. So if you were thinking that I didn't have like any idea or any system for the bookshelves and a lot of the questions I get, in fact, almost like half of them are A, why do you do this? And B, how do you find anything? Well, my question back to you is how often are you searching through your bookshelves for stuff? Like legitimately, because I don't find myself doing that very much. Probably that's just my individual needs. I keep my TBR stack separate. I don't think you can see it in this video, but it's right above here. It's a separate shelf entirely for my TBR. That's really the only browsing I do unless I've thought of a book and I want to find it. Also, in addition to that question, I am surprised by how much I know where things are. It's very weird. Um, <laughs> you'd think it would be harder, but I actually have had a very good experience knowing where everything is when people want something or if my husband wants something. I can usually find it in the same amount of time it would take me otherwise. Because again, I don't organize alphabetically. I've never done that. I've never liked that. I'm like a mood genre person because I'd rather be searching in a in an area as a whole instead of just searching by author. And everyone has different preferences for that, obviously, but this is just how I prefer it is by mood, really. I think the reason I'm able to still find things and really not have that be a problem at all is because they're organized that way. And because, I mean, you're looking at it straight on, but you have to realize that if you are outside of the camera, like view, you can look at it from the side, you can still see the covers from the side, and there's a lot of signals, like the size of the book, the color of the banding and the binding. Um, and I have to say, there's a certain interesting intimacy <laughs> that occurs between like you and the books, knowing them by their inside pages. It's definitely sort of a weird experience and it's a new way to look at them. I find myself really liking it. I I've had it like this for, almost a year now and I, I don't think I'm gonna change it frankly I, I like it this way and that is the pure simplest answer to the question why do I keep my shelves like this and so I can give you is simply because I tried it I was nervous when I tried it but I tried it and I really liked it and I still really like it however I did want to put that question to the test and sort of attempt and hope that I can prove that I do really know where everything is so if that's your main concern then don't worry about me, I'm fine. It's it's just the way I like my books. So what I did is I asked my husband to make, like type out seven to 10 titles, I'm not sure how many are in here, of books that we have on these three shelves. So no classics, cause they're in the bedroom and nothing on the entry shelf. Cause that's really just like vintage books that we haven't read yet. We just sort of have them around, you know how we are. <laughs> So he went through yesterday on our typewriter, who I named Charlie, by the way. You haven't met him yet. I should introduce you to Charlie. He's a cool guy. 
he's a typewriter and I am talking about him as if he is real, but to us he is. He has his own personality. Anyway, so my husband typed up these titles on Charlie, the typewriter, without telling me what they were, so I don't know what's in here, but I'm gonna pick them through and then see if I can find it. The tricky bit is I'm not sure how I'm going to film this, to be honest, because this is a smaller space and I'm not sure if I should just leave the camera and the lighting like it is or if I should pick you up and take you with me. I'm honestly not sure or if I should just like go for it even though you can't see all the shelves because I don't know where he picked them from. Like he could have picked something from up here or over there. Like I don't know. So I, I, I really don't know. I'm going to try it and we'll see what happens but um, I'll do my best. That's all I can say. I don't know. It's gonna be hard to film. <laughs> I don't know how to do it. I don't know. All right, well, let's just go for it anyway. So what I'm gonna do is just pick one out and they he gave me like a little, here, I'll show you. So that's what we're gonna do. I am going to just pick one out and let's see what happens. I can't really raffle it, but you know what I'm saying. Okay. Okay, the first one is Good Me, Bad Me, which is a thriller. So I think I'm for this one, can you see my thriller? No, you can't. <laughs> okay, well, I guess here, I have an idea. What I'm gonna do is like move the camera an annoying a number of times. Hold on, you hold there and you'll see it in a sec. Also, I'm very tall, so I don't know. It's gonna be hard to do. Bear with me, okay? I'm very tall, so you're gonna like not be seeing my face for a minute, but it was, what was it? It was Good Me, Bad Me, which is a thriller, and I know that these are my thrillers, and this is it right here. Do I win? 10 points? I did it. Okay, let's do another one, this is fun. All right, let's pick another one. This one has two, like, stuck together, so I guess we'll do both of them. It is The Goose Girl and Speak. Okay, can you see, I just want to make sure you can see where I'm going, because these are, that's a YA and a, another YA, but this is more children's lit. Children's lit would be up here. Can you see this? Can you see me? Kind of. Okay, children's lit is this one. Goose girl. And I can tell, because from the side you can see the top, you know? So it's not like you can't tell where things are, it's just that, it's just different. All right, and the other one was speak, so I'm going to grab that one really quick. I think I put that in a weird spot though. To be honest. Okay, what was it? Speak. Um I think I put it. Yeah, I found it. Don't worry. Okay, here we go. New cover by the way. This is like 25th anniversary or something. But yeah. Speak. Found it. Took me another second longer than usual, but I honestly think that it's no longer than most people take looking at their shelves anyway. So yeah. Want to do another one? I do, because I'm having a weird amount of satisfying fun with this. Okay, let's pick one. The Folk of the Fringe. That's an Orson Scott Card short story collection. Can you see that? Okay. This is going to be done here because this is like my sort of catch-all. The Folk of the Fringe. Am I good or am I good? Yeah. Let's do another one. All right. Red Rising, I bet you my husband put this in here because he's just reread that on audiobook. Okay. Red Rising, where do I put you, man? Um, I think it'll be over here because this is sort of my incomplete, oh my God, am I good or what? Oh, I'm so proud of myself right now. <laughs> All right, let's do one more. I don't know. Are you having fun? Okay, I won't look. Okay, and the last one is Life of Pi. Yep. Okay. All right, this one's tricky. Oh, I see it. <laughs> Fun fact, this is my most borrowed book. Like, people have, no, Twilight's my most borrowed book, and by the way, adults borrowed it, but I think this is my second most borrowed book, 
and I would like encourage people to leave notes in there and margins and stuff. Anyway, anyway, that's besides the point. Point proven, I know where stuff is, man. I don't know how I do it. Magic powers, telepathy, I mean, telepathy. Is that the thing where you move stuff or is that the thing where you can think of things to move them? I don't know. You get the point. Anyway, I'm gonna put this back. I guess that proves it. I do know where things are weirdly, somehow, magically. I just know it's different than you might think it is. If you wanna try like arranging your shelf this way, I think you might be surprised by how much you like it and how much you know where things are still. I mean, when you read a book, you're not just looking at the cover, right? You're not just looking at the spine. You're thinking about the shape, the way it felt, whether or not it was paperback or hardcover. And that's what I remember more is like the size, shape, and feel of it. So that just makes more sense to me, I guess. I hope this answered your questions about why I do this. I know it's a little out of the ordinary. I know lots of people don't do this. Lots of people seem to be very upset by it for some strange reason. I don't know why, but hey, uh, that's really on you and not me. This is just how I organize my books. It's how I like it. It's my house, they're my books, they're my shelves, and I feel like you should do whatever you want to do with your shelves, whether or not other people think it's cool or think it's weird or if it doesn't make sense to them. I guarantee you throughout history, people have probably had much weirder ways than this of cataloging their books. I quite like the way it ties together the room. I like that it feels mesh with the walls, like it doesn't feel like it's falling in on you anymore, but it's still very clear that a reader lives here. And to me, I know that I love these books and for some reason people think they have to have their spine facing out to prove that you love your books or that you've read books or something, but I mean, that's again, not really my problem to worry about. I know what I've read and what I love. I adore my books. If I didn't adore them, then I wouldn't keep them and I would just get rid of them, but I love having my books. I love having books on these shelves that I want to have forever. But um, again, I have six bookshelves in a thousand square foot apartment, so you do the math and let me know what you think. Let me know if you like this, if you would ever try this, if you've ever seen anyone else doing it, if you know what the heck it's called, because truthfully, I have no idea. I see it quite often and I still don't know what it's properly called. Spine in, backwards books. I don't know, man. Thanks so much for watching. Do drop me a comment below and let's chat about this. I would love to know how you organize your bookshelves. Like what's the method to your madness? Let me know. And if you're new here and you haven't subscribed yet, but you like all things bookish TBRs, reviews, hauls, unhauls, wrap ups, all the good bookish stuff, then I am your girl. So go ahead and press that subscribe button and I will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.